Hello everyone, welcome to another music hall video. This time I'm joined by my cats, Randy Rhodes and Zoe. <laughs> uh, different kind of scenery. Uh, this is my music hall from the past weekend. The weekend of, I'm gonna say November 7th. And um, this week, again, we got vinyl and CDs like we've been showing. And uh, I'm gonna start with vinyl this week as opposed to CDs. Yeah, and get right into it. First up, Doobie Brothers, minute by minute. Um, featuring Michael McDonald, and this is uh, their huge hit with Michael McDonald's What a Fool Believes is on here. Also has the uh, insert with the doobie there. Next up, found this for a buck. I was pretty excited about George Starrgood and Destroyers, his uh, debut album. Of course, features the cover of uh, One Bourbon, One Scotch, One Beer. Huge hit for him. Uh, really good shape. And we got uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer's self-titled debut album. Uh, features the hit song Lucky Man. And um, I've been on kind of a uh, prog rock kick lately, as you might have seen from these videos. Um, I was never, I'm not going to say I wasn't huge into prog rock. I was always a hit, uh, always a fan of hits from uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Yes, can't just bands like that. Um, but recently, I, I, I kind of... Uh, been trying to discover it because I never really fully indulged in it. I just, you know, I know a lot of songs, know a lot of albums, but I just never really fully indulged. So I'm getting into that. Um, so you'll see a lot of that stuff here. Next up, uh, Jethro Tull. This is Benefit. Released in 1970. This is uh, Jethro Tull kind of starting to come on their own and bring in the um, prog rock influences in. Again, really, really nice shape. Got a good price on that. Uh, next up, another genre that uh, I'm kind of rediscovering and getting more into Southern Rock. This is The Outlaws with their self-titled debut album. Cool gay fold there. Um, features uh, probably the most well-known song, Green Grass and High Tide. Uh, but I prefer The Outlaws, um, Bring Them Back Alive, which is a live album, which is really, really good. Next up, uh, just watched a documentary on these guys, Chicago. Um, I thought I owned this. I, I may have owned it, might have sold it off, or gave it to someone to borrow and didn't get it back. This is uh, Chicago's debut album, Chicago Transit Authority. Gayfold again. This came out in 1969, and um, pretty ballsy. Chicago debuted with a uh, double album. Uh, features the big hit. <coughs> Excuse me. Does anybody know what time it is? And of course, the uh, amazing guitar work of Terry Kath. Uh, next up, uh, the last one I have vinyl. This is one that my girlfriend's father grabbed for me. This is Molly Hatchet with uh, Beating the Odds. And this one has a different uh, singer on here, uh, Jimmy Farrar. Farrar, however you say his name there. Uh, this is their third album by Molly Hatchet. And uh, I noticed there's a cover of Creedence Clearwater's song on here, Penthouse Popper, which is um, Creedence Clearwater is one of my favorite bands. So again, um, we're selling rock here, and uh, Molly Hatchet always has some really cool artworks. I feel like sometimes their artwork's better than their music, <laughs> but that's not uh, their artwork's really good. So that's that's not really saying much. Oh, next up, we're gonna get into the CDs, uh, some more CDs with a really good price, and I was getting ready to put them away in my collection, and which I keep everything in alphabetical and chronological order. So they're gonna, they're already in alphabetical order, getting ready to put away. I just gonna gotta make a little more room for them. So you're gonna see that reason why they're in alphabetical order. And uh, also, how how do how does everyone organize their collection? Do you put them in alphabetical order? Do you put them in chronological? Do you separate it by genres? I'm kind of curious because I just kind of put everything in alphabetical order and chronological as they're released. I don't really separate by genres. All right, first up, Bon Jovi's uh, sophomore release. This is 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Featured the minor hit, In and Out of Love. Uh, bon Jovi had a huge hit on his first album with Runaway. And then um, he would follow this up with Slippery When Wet, which obviously they became one of the biggest bands in the world once that was released. Next up, a compilation by Deep Purple. Uh, I'm not huge in the greatest hit stuff, but I'm a big Deep Purple fan, and uh, I just thought I had to own this. 
Uh, space Truck and Kentucky Woman, Hard Road, Ring That Neck, Burn, Woman from Tokyo Alive, Hush, Smoke in the Water, and then a live version of Highway Star. Next, another one from Deep Purple. This is Slaves and Masters. Uh, I believe this is um, Joe and Turner on vocals. Uh, I just threw it in real quick and I just trying to remember from memory. I believe it was Joe and Turner who, uh, you know, worked with Ricky Blackmore and Rainbow on the um, Street Between the Eyes album. Next up, a later release from the Doobie Brothers. Uh, well, it's old, it's 1989, but uh, you know, later after, it's, sorry, there's a little glare there. The Doobies were, um, you know, had their big hit run in the 70s. Uh, this doesn't feature Michael McDonald. Uh, pretty, pretty decent album, pretty strong album for uh, the Doobies late in their career. Next up, this is Electric Light Orchestra with Out of the Blue. And this is, uh, I, at first I thought it wasn't remastered when it's supposed to be a 2007 remaster i believe um double album which it came out on vinyl uh compiled down to one disc and it turns out that it actually is digitally remastered in 2007 the booklets remastered uh you know with the liner notes and all that cd is remastered and i found out that it was actually a uh, misprint where i guess they used the old uh card trays in here so uh i actually got it for free because they thought it wasn't remastered but turns out it is and there's actually three extra songs on here, which is mentioned in the book, but obviously not on the cover because the cover is showing the original 80s CD uh, release. Uh, next is a compilation by Peter Gabriel. This is kind of the greatest hits. Uh, Shaking the Cree, 16, Shaking the Tree, excuse me. 16 Golden Great Gates. 16 Golden Greats. I can't speak right now, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, again, you know, Peter Gabriel, not as proggy as the stuff he did with Genesis. But uh, the one thing that always um, confused me about this album is In Your Eyes is not on this album, which is probably his biggest hit along with Salisbury Hill. Next up, speaking of Genesis, this is And Then There Were Three. And this is kind of the, uh, I don't want to say classic lineup, but it's not, but the uh, most popular lineup, I'd probably say, uh, where all the hits came through. Uh, obviously with Phil Collins on vocals. And this came out in 78, and they would, uh, first huge hit, Follow You, Follow Me. And they would obviously would consider, continue throughout the 80s and early 90s with a hit song, we have a hit song. Next up, Don Henley. This is his, uh, I believe, his second solo release. This is uh, Burning, Building the Perfect Beast. Oh, I can't talk for today for some reason. Uh, features his probably biggest hit single as a solo artist, The Boys of Summer. Uh, All She Wants to Do Is Dance is another hit single off of this. And then uh, another artist I'm not huge on, Billy Joel. But I have The Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and 2. This is Volume 3. Um, a lot of songs I wrote on that one here. Uh, An Innocent Man, obviously I know. We Didn't Start the Fire. And The River of Dreams, which I always liked that song. I thought it was pretty cool. So that's one of the main reasons I grabbed it. Plus I had got to complete my collection since I had the first two volumes. I need to get the uh, third volume. And again, this was a really good price. It was like a buck or something, so... Maybe less than that. But I'm sure I know a lot of the songs on here. Just gotta listen to it. Have, uh, a lot of stuff. It's all like, mostly 80s. Oh yeah, from 83 to 97. So it's probably stuff the radio doesn't play anymore. And I have to remember from memory as I was younger. Next up, Elton John's Greatest Hits Volume 3. This compiles stuff from 79 to 87. And um, I'm a big Elton John fan. But mostly of his early 70s work up until the mid-70s. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, a lot of his stuff that was released in the 80s, he had some decent hit songs, but the albums weren't that great. So that's why this is a good uh, CD, to, CD to own, because I don't think I'll go and get the 80s albums. Uh, I guess that's why they call it the blues. Sad songs say so much. I'm still standing. Empty Garden, which is a very underrated hit. Too Low for Zero, Nikita. Probably the biggest songs off of that. Next up, again, getting into Prague. This is... Kansas with the point of no return, the remastered edition. Um, huge fan of this album. I always owned, the, owned it on vinyl, so I wanted to get it on CD, so you know, so I could listen to it in the car and you know have better sounds sometimes that you know where I can't bring my record. 
Next up, another compilation. This one's from Rod Stewart, Singing Again Rod. This compiles uh, basically the only era of Rod Stewart I like, solo. Uh, Reason to Believe, You Wear It Well, Maggie May. Songs like that were just amazing, early stuff that he did. Uh, after that, he would go on in the mid-70s to do kind of his dance disco stuff, and I'm not really a fan of that. Next up, Sticks. This is Paradise Theater. Uh, features the hit songs, Too Much Time My Hands, also The Best of Times is on this. And uh, it's actually the first Stick studio album I own. I only own the greatest hits. And uh, really good price I got on it. Again, all this stuff was like one to two bucks a piece. So that's why I got it. Uh, next up, Super Tramp. Even in the quietest moments. Features the huge hit, Give a Little Bit. And um, I'm really curious to hear this Fool's Overture song, which is about 11 minutes long. Super Tramp, kind of a poppy prog rock band which you know i think everyone knows they might not be that well known by name but the songs and another one by super tramp this is breakfast in america remastered obviously it features the title track uh the logical song goodbye stranger which i always loved that song such a great chorus uh, i used to own this uh original copy before it was remastered when i was younger and it was always missing the album cart so i found the same album on vinyl but the vinyl was just really scratched and beat up so i cut like a little part of the uh, waitress off the vinyl and fit it into the, the tray here and it worked for the time being but then the cd was really cheap i got it from i remember getting it and it was kind of scratched up so i wound up throwing it out because it wasn't listenable uh next up traveling woolberries this is volume one traveling woolberries for those of you that don't know is bob dylan jeff lynn from electric light orchestra roy orbison george harrison and tom petty and this was a this was a pretty big hit. Came out in I believe 80, 88, Yep. Um, Handle with care and ha end of line were you know pretty big songs for uh, Traveling Wilburys. And I did see uh, Tom Petty in concert and he played Handle with care. He added it to his set list, so that was pretty cool to hear it live. And um, they're not actually recognized by their names. It's like Nelson Wilbury. Uh, hold on, let me look at the names here. Lucky Wilbury, Charlie T. Jr., Lefty Wilbury, uh, oh, there it is, sorry. Otis Wilbury, Nelson Wilbury, Charlie T. Jr., Lucky Wilbury, and Lefty Wilbury. So that's what they were known for, or known by. They weren't actually recognized by their uh, real names. But yeah, pretty good album. And uh, I believe they signed like a three album deal at the time. And uh, unfortunately, Roy Orbison died. Uh, shortly after this was released and the music videos you'll see just kind of like a rocking chair moving with no one in it and that's kind of a tribute to Roy Orbison and uh the record company still wanted you know, their other two albums that this was released and they just didn't want to do it without Roy Orbison but they did make another album and they entitled it volume three so you'll see volume one you'll see volume three there's no volume two uh, they kind of did it to be a smart ass because they did their three albums. They go, here's volume one through volume three. And this is also available as a remastered, uh, kind of a small box set with three discs. I believe it's this album, volume three, and uh, I believe the DVD. And last one I grabbed, one of my favorite artists. This is Frank Zappa, Frank Zappa and the Mothers. This is the 2012 remaster of Roxy and Elsewhere. And the cool thing I always liked about Zappa is... He has a lot of albums, like over 100 albums out. And he has a lot of live albums, but he has live albums of all new material. Like this album, I believe, is all new material that was written, recorded, only played live, not available on studio releases. Um, the only one here is More Trouble Every Day, which you might know uh, is kind of a sequel to Trouble Every Day off his debut album, Freak Out. So yeah, that's my... Uh, Music haul for this past weekend, uh, pretty small compared to the last couple weekends. And uh, the place I was going to, Jupiter Records, which is located in Woodbury, New Jersey, is now closed, which is kind of sad because I look forward to going there uh, every weekend, every other weekend, because there's always cool stuff I find there used really cheap. And uh, unfortunately, they closed shop this past Saturday, and they're moving down to Delaware. So I wish them luck down in Delaware. Uh, there, I know they already have another store down there. I visited once. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, I might post some of this stuff on my Instagram, Gary at the Elysiums. 
And if you like what you see, just subscribe. I got some more videos coming this week. Um, kind of want to do another uh, ranking the albums video, which I haven't done in a while. And uh, probably going to pick another year to talk about that year in music. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Everybody stay safe.